my dog Luna. She was found wandering the streets of Tennessee a few years back. She's a mutt, but we think she's probably likely the product of a chow and a sheba. We think this because Luna's got the purple tongue of a chow, and otherwise she's got the body characteristics and mannerisms of a Shiba Inu. There are other traits that Luna has, though, that are likely not inherited from either of her parents. Luna, for example, is friendly with other dogs and all people. That's not likely for Chows or Shibas. So to summarize, there are some things that Luna has inherited from her father. There are other traits that she's inherited from her mother. And there are some traits that are unique to Luna that make her just Luna. Let's think for a minute about your own family tree. Obviously, you've got two parents. Think for a minute about the traits that you have inherited from your father. And what capabilities have you inherited from your mom? Are there things that you can do well that neither of your parents can do? Have you inherited these traits from your grandparents? Or perhaps you haven't inherited these from anyone in your family. Maybe some of these traits just make you unique. Let's get back now to our discussion about dogs. At the top, we're showing some abstract concept of a dog. And below, we're showing four specific examples of dogs, the Poodle, the Beagle, the Basenji, and the Chihuahua. In our example, we're going to focus now on how these dogs communicate. We'll say that the average dog, the one shown at the top of the screen, has a generic wolf in its repertoire. And we'll say the Poodle is your fairly average dog and communicates the same way that the abstract concept of a dog does at the top of the picture. Now, if you've ever had a beagle as a pet, you know that beagles communicate quite differently. Instead of saying woof woof, beetles have a unique characteristic howl. The Basenji, on the other hand, is the silent dog from Africa. It doesn't bark at all. And the Chihuahua, if you've ever met one, does do a lot of woofing, but it typically does much more woofing than the average dog. What we want to do now is we want to create some Java classes to mimic the behaviors of these different types of dog. We've got our basic dog classes in place now. What we're going to do is we're going to define some method now for the parent dog class shown here. Okay, so we've got the skeleton now for the dog class. For our basic dog variables, we're going to say that each dog is going to be assigned a unique name. We're now going to create a method that can set the dog's name and another method that can be used to retrieve the dog's name. With the setter and the getter method now in place, we have the working of a basic functional dog. Now let's turn our attention to the derived classes. We are now going to set up the Poodle class. As a reminder, we want to set up the Poodle class to behave identically with the parent dog class. In Java, we can copy the behavior quite simply by using the extends. When I use the keyword extends, what I'm saying is that the poodle is going to derive all of its behaviors from the dog. The poodle is a dog. The poodle inherits from dog. These are all the different ways of saying the same thing. In fact, no additional code is needed for the poodle right now. Recall, however, that we wanted the dog to be able to speak and say woof. Let's go back and code that particular method for the parent dog class. We've now given our basic dog the ability to speak by printing the word woof to the console. Because our poodle class derives from dog, or extends dog, the poodle is also going to have the capability to speak in the same way. 
Let's go to our, our new tester class now and try all this out. Okay, we've created in our dog tester class a dog and a poodle, and we're going to ask each of them to speak. Notice that in the poodle class, we do not have a speak method, but because the poodle inherits from dog, it inherits the dog's speak method, as well as its other method. Here we see the two woofs, first from the dog and the second from the poodle. We see therefore that to get the poodle to have identical behavior to the dog, is extremely simple. Now let's turn our attention to the beagle. Recall that the beagle, instead of doing a woof, wants to do a howl. So we need somehow to replace the dog's speak method. But we want the beagle to inherit all the other methods from the dog besides speak. So let's open up the beagle code now and see how we can do this. First, I'm going to once again use the extends, and now the beagle has identical behavior to the dog. But we want to override the method that does the speaking in the dog. So we're going to do that like this, at override public void speak. What I'm telling the compiler with this extends command is that I want the beagle once again to copy all the behaviors of the dog. But when I use this at override with the public void speak, I'm essentially rewriting the speak command to be unique for the beagle. Now we're going to have a beagle class that's going to be just like the dog, except that its speak behavior is going to be different. This would probably be a good time to mention that in BlueJay, the inheritance relationship is shown by this solid white arrow. In comparison, these dotted arrows with the lines show a containment relationship. A way to think about this is that the dog tester contains dogs, poodles, and we're going to add a beagle soon. Meanwhile, this poodle inherits from dog, and so does the beagle. Let's now add a beagle to the dog tester and see if we can make it howl, and that way we can see that we've got a different behavior from a regular dog. Let's run our new tester now to see if we can get the beagle to behave the way we want. Here we see that the regular dog and the poodle are going woof, but we see our beagle B is using a different word for its speaking. It's doing the howl that we want. The next class we're going to consider is the Basenji. Recall that the Basenji does not speak at all. We could leave the speak method just like this, but there is a danger that someone looking at our code might mistakenly believe that we forgot to add the code. So let's put a comment in here to make it clear to the reader that we really did want this method to be completely blank. Okay, that should do the trick. The last class we're going to consider is the Chihuahua. Recall that we want the Chihuahua to speak the same word as the base class dog. However, we want it to speak it twice as often. We could code the Chihuahua's speak method like this. That way it would say the word woof twice, whereas the regular dog would only say it once. But there's a problem with this approach. If we were ever to go back and change what the dog says, we would have to change it here in the code as well. It would be much more convenient if we could simply call the dog method here twice. We could try to code it like this, but there's a problem. When we call the speak method here, the compiler has no way of knowing we want to call the dog speak method. Instead, the compiler is simply going to call the closest speak method, which happens to be this one, and then we're going to end up in an infinite loop. 
So in order to specify that we want the dog's original speak method instead of this new speak method, we're going to use this keyword super. Now we're making it clear to the compiler that we want to call the dog's or the parent class's speak method. Let's now go back and add the Basenji and the Chihuahua to the dog tester class and see if we can get the four unique behaviors that we wanted. Okay, I've added the Basenji and the Chihuahua now to our test code. Let's run everything and see if we get what we're expecting. We see that this is the wolf from the original dog, and here is the mimicked behavior from the poodle. Here is the howl from the bas uh, beagle, and we can see that the last two wolves are indeed from the Chihuahua. Notice that the Basenji didn't speak at all. So in summary, if we look at what we did here, we were able to get the poodle to mimic the dog's behavior exactly by extending from the dog. We were able for the beagle to get the dog to have a completely different behavior by overriding the speak method and replacing its entire contents. For the Basenji, we also overrode the speak method, but here we suppressed the behavior of the original dog. And for the Chihuahua, we were able to reuse what the dog did, but modified it in a way to double its action. So hopefully, from this video, you've been able to see how powerful the concept of inheritance is in Java, and how little code there is required to modify, reuse, or replace the existing methods.